is MJ and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to make this cute button up crop cardigan. This is the medium size that I'm working on today but if you go to the description box you'll be able to purchase the PDF that also includes the long version with pockets and a belt. So we'll just be working through this style but the PDF also includes the other style so if you love that if you loved it in the pictures that I showed at the beginning of the video Definitely you want to go purchase that PDF so that you have both patterns. It's basically a two in one. The yarn that I'll be using for this tutorial is Brava Tweed Worsted Weight and this yarn is provided by We Crochet. And the hooks that I'm using are from Furls Crochet. These are their Cafe Streamline hooks and I'll be using a five millimeter as well as a 5.5 millimeter size. You can check the description box for the link for the yarn and the hooks, and there'll also be a 15% off coupon code for your hook purchase. This cardigan is made all in one piece and it's worked from the bottom up. So we begin at the back with the band and then we continue to work up. We'll crochet out the sleeves and work the front panels. Now, if you go to the description box, there'll be a link to purchase the PDF and that will also include the long version with pockets and a belt. For this tutorial I'll be showing you how to make our crop version and it will have a button up band. Now I've started with the back band and if you want to make this a little bit narrower that's fine. This is quite quite wide. It's about four inches. So let's get started with that and I'll show you how to work up this stretchy back band. So I'll be working the band with the five millimeter crochet hook and we're gonna start out with a slip knot. And then a chain of 15. Okay, so the 15 chains is the width of the band. So if you wanna reduce that, that's fine. But also this does take into account when we're working up the back measurement, the band is included in that. So if you want the cardigan to be the same length, you would just need to work a few more rows of the stitch pattern if you shorten your band. So now what we'll do is work in the second chain from the hook, a single crochet and we'll work single crochets along the chain. So we'll end up with a total of 14 single crochet stitches. Okay, so once you've worked all the way, we're gonna chain one and turn. And now the band will be worked in the back loop only throughout. So we're gonna work single crochets through the back loop only. So each row remains at four stitches or 14 stitches and we're working single crochets in the back loop only. Sometimes a good idea to count your stitches as you go so that you don't lose a stitch. We chain one and turn and then just continue working in rows. So you'll want to check your pattern for the size that you're working on as to how many rows that you'll need to work. So we'll just continue to work single crochets in the back loop only. And you wanna work up until you have the correct number of rows for the size you're working on. So you'll wanna to refer to your pattern for the size. The pattern includes extra small two five X plus there are also child sizes available. So this tutorial will work for our child sizes as well. We'll follow similar steps, just the sizing will be different. So once you have completed, for our medium size, I've worked up 62 rows. 
So I'll be making the medium size in this tutorial. So now what you can do is you can count your ridges. When you see a ridge here, that's gonna count for two rows. So you can just count by twos and you should have a total of 62 for the medium size. Or if you're working on a different size, just crochet up the number of rows needed. So once your rows are completed, we can change over to our larger hook. We'll chain one and now we'll work a single crochet per row. So work across the length of this band working one single crochet per row. So we're now using our 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. And when I'm working through the rows, if you take a look, here's two rows. You can see one row has this loop and then the next row, it's this thicker bit here. So as we work along, it just really helps to know every other, we're going through this loop then we're going through that thicker section, then you should be coming to that single loop again, and that will just help you when you're working across. So I'm gonna work across now my 62 stitches, and then I'll meet you up again. Okay, so you should have worked across your 62 stitches or the stitches needed for the size you're working on. Now I'll chain one and turn. Now this will be our right side of our work and I always like to mention this in my videos, especially when we're working with these one piece garments, it's important to know what is the right and what is the wrong side. So I like to just attach a little stitch marker and then I'll know throughout that this is the right side of my work. Now we'll turn. And I'm just gonna be working this cardigan up in a simple stitch. So I'm working it in extended single crochets. So if you haven't worked that stitch before, I'll work through it slowly to begin. So we'll go through the stitch, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. Going through the stitch, pulling up a loop, so a regular single crochet, we're yarning over, pulling through two, we're yarning over, pulling through one, yarn over, pull through two. So we're just extending the height of the stitch, but it still keeps a very dense fabric. And the height is about the same as a half double crochet. So we'll work across our total of 62 stitches. Okay, so I've worked across. You'll see that this will really start to curve and flare out because our extended single crochet stitch will work out much wider than a single crochet stitch. So this will flare out. Now we'll chain one and turn. We're back to the right side of our work. I like this being the right side because I like how this, the transition looks from the band to the stitches. So now what we'll do is just repeat our row two. So we're working extended single crochets in every stitch. So there's no increasing or decreasing We'll just be working even in rows until we reach the sleeve section of the pattern. So this is where you can make alterations depending on how you would like your cardigan to fit. So I'm showing you in this tutorial the crop version, but you could make the cardigan hip length if you would prefer, or the long version that I also have written out in the PDF. So at this point, you're just going to work in rows until the length that you would like has been re reached. So if I give this a measure right now, so as you can see, the band is really close to the four inch mark. Okay, so it's about four inches. So what we're going to do is we're going to work until we have about 10 inches worth of work, and that's including the band so we really need an additional six inches crocheted 
So I like to just measure from the outside when I'm doing this. So I will measure and keep working along until I hit that 10 inch mark. So if you're working on a different size, this is where the underarm, so this will come up to your underarm. So if you want it longer, just continue with additional rows. It's not going to be affected the rest of the pattern. One of the benefits to working a cardigan flat in one piece like this is we have limited seaming. The only thing we need to seam is the sides and the sleeves once it's all completed. So there will be no shoulder seam. There's no arm seam. So it's very seamless. I would say the downside to this design is that you don't, we don't necessarily work any shaping into the arm. So our arm ends up being the same width throughout and then the cuff is what will pull it in. So it kind of gives it more that sort of balloonish look. The sleeve will be baggy down here rather than having a gradual taper. If we were to work this same design from the side across beginning at the sleeve, it would give us the ability to have a more narrow sleeve if we would prefer that. But I kind of like the in fashion right now, this the wider sleeve look is quite in. So this is a really good uh, pattern that will stick with sort of what the trends are right now in, in fashion. So I'm gonna continue to work this up off camera. When I get my total length made, I'm gonna meet you back up and I can let you know how many rows in total I worked to that point. Okay, so I've been working away on my back piece and let's just give it a measure here to see where we're at. Okay, so I'm about 10 inches at the side. If you measure here, it's gonna be a little bit less but at the side, I'm about at that 10 inch mark. Now you can alter it, of course, at this point, make it longer if you want, or even do it a little shorter if you want. But this is how we're gonna get started, and then you can customize to your desired length. So if you're working on our long version, you're gonna need a lot more work before beginning the sleeves. But for our crop, we're gonna start the sleeves now. So what we're gonna do is grab another ball of yarn and we're gonna join up into the left corner. And I'm gonna chain out a total of 45 stitches. And once you've reached 45, you can fasten this off. And this just sets up the sleeve so we can work continuously. So with our cuff, this sleeve length is gonna be about 19 inches. So it's a fairly long sleeve. So you may wanna adjust that, but it's gonna be a nice oversized fit and it'll be nice and cozy. And you can always roll up the cuff if you find it a bit long. Join back over here. I also wanted to mention we are back to the right side. So when you, you want to make sure that you end on a wrong side, especially if you've altered the length of the cardigan. So when we're working out these chains, you wanna be working on the right side of your work. So now joining back with the working yarn. I have a chain there I need to pull back. So now with the working yarn, we wanna chain out 46. So we're gonna have an extra chain on this side due to the turning chain, but it will end up being, the actual length will be 45 stitches. We, de we need to chain out that extra chain for the turn. So let's chain out a total of 46. And just make sure you don't make those chains too tight. Okay, so I've chained out a total of 46 
And now we'll work one extended single crochet in the second chain from the hook. So we'll just continue now working extended single crochets. You're gonna work them all across the chain so that you should have 45. Okay, and then we'll work across the body, which is 62. And then you'll have another 45 extended single crochet stitches on that side. Okay, so I'm gonna just complete working this across off camera and then I'll meet you back up again. Okay, so I've worked all the way across. We'll chain one and turn. So now we're onto the wrong side. And I'll be working across extended single crochets into every stitch. So you should have a total of 152 stitches or make changes to your pattern if you've altered the sleeve or follow along with the size you're making. So now what we're gonna do is basically work, we're working the sleeves and the body all together as one piece and we'll be working it until we've made half of the sleeve. So basically the back half of the pattern. So I want you to make a total of 20 rows for this size. And this is again where you could make alterations if you wanted the sleeves a bit, bit wider or a bit narrower, just work fewer rows or more rows, but work them in multiples of two. So I'm gonna work my 20 rows off camera and then I'll meet you up again. Okay, so I finished working up 20 rows for my sleeve. So I'm now back to the right side of my work and I've marked off the neck opening. So what you wanna do, follow along for your size with how many stitches you need to count over. But for the medium, I needed to count over 66 stitches and I marked the following stitch. I did the same thing on the other side and so from marker to marker, you should have 20 stitches and this is the neck opening for the sweater. So now what we're gonna do is work each side separately. So it still continues in one piece, there's no seaming, but we'll work the right side and then we'll work the left side. So we're continuing just from where we left off. So the sleeve portion, we need to work the second half of the sleeve now, as well as working the front of the cardigan, and we'll have some increased rows to start bringing the cardigan in. But to begin, follow along with your size. What you're going to do is work for the medium a total of six rows and that's just working in extended single crochets over to the stitch before the marker so we're just working back and forth we won't start the shaping until row seven for the medium size and then we'll start into the increase pattern so i'm going to go ahead and get working on just working up my six rows of extended single crochets. So we're just working across to the marker. Okay, so I'll work that across now. Okay, so I've worked across 66 stitches right up to the marker. We'll chain one and turn and I'll continue working. So we're working six rows at 66 stitches so I'm gonna go ahead and work up these rows off camera and then we'll meet back up for the front shaping. Okay, so I'll go ahead and do that. So pause the video and then we'll meet up again for the next section. Okay, so I've completed six rows and for this, for the seventh row for our increase, we won't be doing it until we get over here. So I'll work across my seventh row and then I'll meet you up at this side. Okay, so I've worked all the way across to the last stitch and then in the last stitch, we're gonna add two extended single crochets. Okay, so that completes the seventh row. Now, 
The increase pattern is the same for all sizes. The difference for our, our sizes is how many rows we worked before starting. And this, the entire increase section will get us the rest of our sleeve. So we don't have to worry about marking off for the body while we work through these increase rows to keep it simple. So we'll chain one in turn and for row, for the next row of the increase, it's just a non increase row. So we'll just work one in every stitch across. So I've worked up to 67 stitches. We'll work back 67 and then we'll just continue in that increase pattern. So we'll work an increase row, then a non-increase row, an increase row, then a non-increase row. So we're going to increase a total of seven stitches in total. So work row one and two of the increase pattern, and then you'll repeat row one and two six times. So we're basically once for row one of the increase, which is row seven, but just to keep things simplified for different sizes, I have it labeled as row one and row two of the increase. So you'll do a total of 14 rows of increases. Okay, so that's gonna take us up to the second half of the sleeve. So I'm gonna to continue to work the increase pattern off camera. So I'll work across this second row with one in every stitch. Then I'm gonna come back along and when every time you're coming to the end here, the neck opening will be increased. Okay, so we'll end up increasing this so that our neck is going, our neckline will go down like this. So again, a total of 14 rows will be increasing every other row. So once I have that completed, you can pause the video. We'll meet back up once the increased rows are complete. Okay, so I finished working my increased rows. So we're ending on the outside sleeve section. So that's a total of 20 rows that we've worked. So 14 increase rows, 20 in total. So then we're gonna fasten off here. Okay, and then we're gonna be flipping back over to our right side. So if we go back to how we did our increases, I increased up to a total of 73 stitches and then I worked all the way back across so that our sleeve length would be complete. So now I've already marked off the sleeve. So if you remember, we worked out 45 stitches for our sleeve. So I counted back across 45 stitches because we know that is the total length of the sleeve. So I counted across 45 stitches and then I marked the next stitch. So now what we'll be doing is completing the body, the front right panel. So that will be this panel here. So we'll need to join back in so the marked, we'll need to join back into the marked stitch and continue working the body section. Okay, so we'll just join into the marker. We're on our right side. Chain one, work an extended single crochet all in that same stitch. So now we're working across in extended single crochets. Our increases are complete. So now we're just gonna be working even in rows until our front equals the back. So at this point, if you made any changes to the length of your back, you'll wanna work the same number of rows. So I worked this section for my back panel. So I'm gonna do the same for the front. Okay, so if you've altered that at all, just make sure that you have your row count so that you know how many rows to do. 
you're working on the long cardigan, you'd make the number of rows for the long. So for the crop length, I'm going to work now a total of 18 rows. So this is row one. And I'll just con continue to work back and forth till I have 18 rows. And then I'll do a join as you go band to finish off the front panel. Okay, so I've worked up a total of 17 rows because the final row, the 18th, we want to do it in just single crochet stitches. Just like we did the starting at the start of the back. So I'm gonna work this row across and single crochet and then I will do the join as you go ribbing. Okay so I've worked across now what I'd like to do is get you to change over to the smaller hook so I'm going to use the five millimeter now and we're going to chain out for our band so we'll chain a total of 15 Okay, and now we'll work just like we're doing our ribbing, but we're going to be joining it as we go. So let's work in the second chain from the hook, single crochet stitches. So work all the way down the chain. You should have a total of 14 single crochets. Okay, and then we'll skip that first stitch and we'll slip stitch into the next two. And we'll turn. We're gonna work single crochets in the back loop only. Okay, and when you get to the end, you'll chain one and turn and continue to work down 14 stitches through the back loops only. Once you've worked all the way down, we're going to slip stitch now into the next two stitches. Turn, and then we're just going to keep repeating this all the way across the front panel. And we have 28 stitches across the front, so you should have 28 rows. So I'm just going to complete this now off camera. And I'll meet you up again when I have this completed. So now to work our front left panel, we're going to make sure we're on the right side of our work. And here is our marker for our neck. So we're going to skip over our neck opening and we're going to join into the stitch here next to the marker. Okay, so I'm going to join in. The fronts are worked almost the exact same. So what we'll do it's just the reverse, but they're worked the same. So we're gonna work across now in extended single crochets. Okay, so just like we did the right side, we're gonna have a total of six rows without doing any increasing. And then we're gonna have 14 rows of the increase pattern so that our sleeve is a total of 20 rows. 
So in total, our sleeve for the medium size is 40 rows. We work 20 for the, for the back half, and then we work 20 for the front half. So I don't need to work all that with you, but what I would like you to do, I'm gonna work this off camera. I'll get you to do this. I'll get you to work this up. And I'll pause, pause the video and then meet back up for the next section. So we'll work six rows. And then on the seventh row, we'll be doing our increase. This time, instead of increasing at the end of the row, we'll be increasing at the beginning. So that's the difference with the left panel is that we'll do that increase at the start because it's, of course, we're just doing opposite. We're wanting our increase to gradually bring in the front panels. And then we'll edge it with, do some buttons. So I haven't closed it entirely in, but it's pretty close. So now I'm gonna go ahead and work my six rows off camera and then I'll meet you up for that increase. Okay, so I've worked up six rows. One, two, three, four, five, six. And now we're to the seventh where we'll do our increase. So chain one. And we'll work two extended single crochets in the first stitch. Then we'll work across and extended. So we've increased to 67 stitches. And now we're gonna continue increasing like we did the other side, but each increase will happen at the beginning of the row. And we wanna increase so that we have a total of 73 stitches in total. So seven, including this increase, we have a total of seven increases with a row of non-increase, non-increases between. So I'll work that all the way across. And at the end of that row, I've chained one and turned and I'm just working back across and extended single crochets. So this row, we're just working across without an increase at 67 stitches. So continue to work on an increase and then a non-increase row until you reach the 73 stitch mark. And you'll have a total then of 20 additional rows for your sleeve. So 40 rows in total, just like we did the other side. And then I'll meet you up again to mark off the body so we can finish off that front panel. Okay, so I've worked across a total of 40 rows for the sleeves now. And so I've marked off and I've completed all my increases. So I'm at 73 stitches. Now I've marked off the sleeve. So I counted over 45 and put the stitch marker in the next stitch. So just like we did on the other side, except this, this time we're ending here so we don't need to fasten off. So we'll chain one and turn. And now we're just going to start working the front panel. So this is the front left panel. So I'm going to work across and work right into that marked stitch, leaving 45 stitches unworked. So once you get to the end, we're going to chain one and turn and work back across. So just like we did the other side, I want you to do a total of 17 rows of the extended single crochet, and then we'll finish with run one row of single crochet. So a total of 18 rows, but 17 extended and then one single crochet. And then you can work that join as you go ribbing, just like we did on the right side. So basically the same, we're working through the same that we did on the right, just doing it on the left. So I'm gonna complete that off camera and then that's gonna complete our front panels. And the next thing we'll do is add on our sleeve cuffs. Okay, so this is the edge of our sleeve. 
And what you're gonna do is join in your yarn with your smaller hook. And what you're gonna do is work single crochet, single crochet, and then we're gonna skip a row and work a single crochet, single crochet, skip a row, and go across. So you wanna have a total of 26 stitches across. So I'm ending with 26 stitches, and then we're gonna do our join as you go band, just like we did our front panel. So we'll chain out a total of 15, And we'll work single crochets across. So in the second chain from the hook. Okay, so we'll skip that first stitch along the band and then we'll slip stitch into the next two. Turn and then we're gonna start working in the back loop only. So we're basically doing this just like we did the front. So I'm just gonna work across off camera and then I'll meet you up. Okay, so now we'll be working on the edging. So I'll be working a single crochet for every stitch of our ribbed band. And then what you wanna do is if you've altered the length of the side, I'm gonna show you how I figure out how many stitches I should have to evenly space. So I had a total of 20 for half the sleeve and then 18. So I have 38 in total. So take your total number of rows, multiply that by 1.5. So mine comes out to 57, but I'll probably add an extra stitch maybe up in the corner. So I'm going to aim for 58, 20 across the neck, and then again, 58 down this side plus the ribbing. So if you have a different length here, that's basically how you're going to figure it out is just work, look at how many rows you have and then multiply that by 1.5. Because an extended single crochet row, I find about three stitches per two rows works out good. Now if you're looking at your side and it's not coming out nice and smooth, you may need to alter that. But I drop to my smaller hook when I'm doing it and that should make the edging go nice and smooth. So you'll just join down here. You're making sure that your right side is facing and we're just going to join down to the corner. So we're working across 14 across the ribbing. And usually what I like to do is I'll work a single crochet in one row and then I'll do two in the next and that kind of just keeps me on track. So one and then two. And I also like to keep those stitches pretty tight as well. Okay, so I'm gonna continue working this all the way around, but this is basically how now you, we're just gonna get this edge so we're ready to do our ribbing. Okay, so next what you're gonna do is decide how many buttons you wanna add. I have 35 millimeter size buttons. So I'm just gonna lay them out here, how I kind of just like to evenly space them.
Okay, so roughly like that. And then what we wanna do is mark them off with stitch markers. And this is gonna mark out for us when we're gonna make the buttonhole. So I like to add this one here to the bottom. You wanna go across, you want your buttonhole to be around the center of the button. So one, two, three. I'm gonna take it about four stitches Okay, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe nine. Let's go with nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Stick another marker. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And we'll put another marker. Okay, so that roughly is where the buttonholes would be. I'm kind of thinking I could almost do maybe one more. I could probably even go to 10. I don't know, maybe I'll keep it with that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have eight stitches between each buttonhole. Now, if you have different size buttons, or maybe you want only want to th have three and have them spaced out more, that's fine, really whatever you want. This is how you can mark off for where you want your buttonholes. And then it's really easy to work this ribbing. All we'll do is start working our join as we go band all the way around. And then when we hit the markers, we'll be making the buttonholes on those rows. Okay, and I, you can also alter the size of your buttonhole and stitches based on the size of your button. So you can switch that up as well. You just want your button to go through the chain space that you make it not to be too tight, not to be too loose. And then you can really use whatever size buttons you want. Now these ones again are 35 millimeter and I will have the link in the description box on where you can purchase buttons that look like this. Now the join as we go ribbing, I'm not going to be doing it as wide as I have this band because I don't want, I left six stitch, a six stitch opening, which is going to end up being more narrow than this. Plus I find that's quite a heavy band for doing the button up. So I'm gonna do it only eight stitches rather than 14. So what we'll do is come back right where we left off with that edging and we'll chain out nine. Okay, and then we're gonna work back in the second chain from the hook, single crochet, so we're working across a total of eight stitches. Then what we're gonna do is, this is gonna be work just like we've been doing all of our other join as you go bands. We skip that first stitch, slip stitch into the next two. We're gonna turn and work single crochets through the back loop only. And I'm also using my smaller hook here. So we're working across eight stitches, the whole band we're gonna work in this eight stitch width. So now we'll chain one turn, work back down.
Okay, and now we'll slip stitch in the next two. And we're just gonna keep repeating this. We're gonna work this band all the way around our edging until we get to the first buttonhole. So we're gonna just work back and forth. We've got a little ways to go here. We have to get all the way over here. So we'll just keep working this join as you go ribbing all the way until we get to this button, um, this marker here. And then I'll meet you up so that I can show you how to work that buttonhole. Okay, so I've been working on the collar band that's worked all the way around. Now I'm coming up to my stitch marker. Now, as you can see, I have two stitches here. So the stitch marker is the second stitch. So I've worked down my row. I need to slip stitch into the next two. So if you come to the marker first, your buttonhole will be worked on the first row coming up. If the marker is on the second stitch you're slip stitching in, it will be worked coming back down. But the buttonhole regardless is worked the same way. So let's turn, work all the way back up in the back loop only. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, chain one and turn and now for the buttonhole I'm going to make it two stitches so one two three in the back loop and then we'll chain two skip over two stitches and then work three Okay, and then we'll slip stitch in to the next two. Turn, then we'll work back up. One, two, three in the back loop. And then we'll work two single crochet in the chain two space. And then you should have three stitches. And now what you can do is make sure that you can fit your button through the hole. So this one's gonna be, this one is gonna be a little bit snug, but it still goes through and I'm okay with that. So that's good. So basically just leave the spacing, like if you need to leave four stitches, leave four or three, whatever you need to fit your button. If you have a small button, you may only need to do one uh, skip one stitch in a chain one. So we'll chain one and turn and we'll keep working now until we get to the next buttonhole. So I'll work here this little section and then I'll meet you up again for the next one. Okay, so now this time I've, I'm coming to my marker for the first slip stitch. So let's remove the marker slip stitch in the next two. Okay, so now this time we're gonna make the button going, working this way. So one, two, three, one, two, skip over two, one, two, three. Chain one and turn. One, two, three, and then we'll work a two single crochet in the chain two space. One, two, three. And then just continue this. So you can see how easy it makes it by marking off those buttonholes. So we don't have to do any counting once we're working the ribbing. We just work that buttonhole when we get to it on all the sorting's been figured out. And even if you 
decide with the long cardigan you want to do buttons, it's just work the same way. You just keep spacing out your stitch markers, putting as many buttons as you want. Now the long version that I did, I omitted the buttons completely and did a wider band for that style. So you can choose when you look in the pattern to pick whatever style you prefer. Okay, so I'm just gonna continue now. I'm gonna complete this off camera and then I'll meet you back up when I'm finished all of the buttonholes. Okay, so I'm coming up to the end. We're gonna fasten off at the end here. We don't need a long tail because we've already left those long tails at our sleeve cuffs for seaming. So now you can just weave in these tails and any other tails you have. Now I'm going to lay this out so you can see. So this is how it's now looking. We've got our buttonholes made. So now next we'll want to sew on. You can sew on those buttons, but I think I'll leave that until after I block my piece. But I wanted to get everything complete before I did the blocking. So what you'll do there is you're just lining up your buttons sewing them to the opposite side. Okay, so really simple. Just sew on the buttons, use a small yarn needle and just your worsted weight and just sew them on. So now for blocking, you don't need to do real aggressive blocking with acrylic yarn, but I'm still going to just go ahead and, and use my normal process, which I like to put the cardigan into some lukewarm water with a little bit of wool wash, or if you don't have any, you can add just a tiny bit of dish soap. So we're gonna let it soak for about 25, 25 to 30 minutes in the water, and then I'll squeeze all that water out. I like to roll it into a towel just to get any of the excess water out. And then it will just loosen up the fibers and you'll be able to lay it out on your blocking mats and pin it to measurements. So you wanna take a look at the schematics in the pattern, make sure to block it out. So what I like to do when I'm blocking, I like to start at the back. I find that the best. I like to take my width measurement. Now, if you want your band coming in tight at your waist, I suggest not pulling the band out to the full measurement. Allow it just to naturally cinch in, but you wanna take the body section and make sure it is pinned out to the measurement. And then I like to go next to make sure that my length is correct. So I like to block that off, making sure that this length is about that 10 inch mark or whatever you have decided on. So I do that. I start out with the back, make sure that's all lined up to measurements. And then I start working out the sleeves. So you want to make sure your sleeve width is correct. You want to make sure your sleeve length is correct. And then once I work through the sleeves, I then go to onto the front panels and do the same thing, making sure all the measurements. And then you just allow it to dry, um, usually overnight, sometimes longer. I believe I left my long one to block probably a couple days because of the thick ribbing and everything I had it I had to layer them over top of each other so that it did take a little bit longer to dry but basically you just want to allow allow it to fully dry then just remove your pins and then it's all going to be nice pressed it'll be to the exact measurements that we want and then we can just do the final seaming at our buttons and for the long cardigan I added a belt and some pockets but for the short one all we'll be doing is adding on those button those buttons to finish it off. So I'm just going to go ahead and get to the blocking stage with mine and I will do a little picture for you and maybe a quick little video just to show you it out on the blocking mats and then we'll meet up for seaming. Okay so I've blocked the cardigan out to measurements and as you can see I've allowed the cuffs on the sleeves to cinch in as well as my front panels and back panel. 
but everything else has been put out to measurements with the schematic and it should end up fitting nicely. So that's why you can see that I don't have the front or the sleeves blocked right out. You could if you wanted to, but I want them to pull in a bit. So I've just left them cinched in. So now I'll just allow that to fully dry. And then once it's all dried, I'll take the pins out and we'll meet back up for the seaming. Okay, so I somehow lost my clip for the other sweater showing how to seam, but I'm just going to show you on the child size and that's okay. They're going to work the exact same way. So what you're going to do is just line up your right sides. So you want your right sides facing and I have mine marked so I know that that's the right side. And I've left a long tail at the cuff. It's nice and long. I usually like to say, if you measure out how much you have to seam and then double it, usually, and mine is maybe a little bit more than double, but it usually works out. So that's just kind of a general rule of thumb. So you're just gonna take your yarn needle and if you didn't leave a long enough tail, that's fine. Just join on a new piece. So we can start just by going through the cuff. So just go through each stitch of the cuff. And it will seem like a little bit of a nuisance at the start with this long tail. Once you get going, it won't be too bad. So just go through each stitch of the cuff. And then I'll meet you up here as we start going through the sleeve. Okay, so you want to make sure that your arm is even so you can always add a marker or something to the underarm just to make sure your sleeve doesn't move as you're sewing it. You can clip it. You just want to make sure that you are sewing it so that you don't distort the sleeve in any way. You're just going through one side and because we do have a stitch there, you can go through the stitch if you want. And we're just really doing um, a simple whip stitch, just seaming the sleeve together. And then once we get to the side, we're gonna do the same thing. You can make sure that the sides all even right down to the band and just sew all the way down. And your yarn, if it's long like mine, should be long enough to do the whole piece. If not, if you feel like yours is gonna be too short, maybe try stopping at the underarm and then joining on and coming back up or joining another piece of the underarm and working down. So I'm gonna complete this off camera and then I'll meet you back up for the finishing steps. So now when you're sewing on your buttonholes, you really wanna just make sure that you get that button lined up with the corresponding buttonhole. And all you need to do is take some, a strand of your yarn and use a yarn needle to sew that on. want to make sure your yarn needle will fit through your buttonholes. And again, these buttons are 30, a 35 millimeter size, and I have the link in the description box to purchase these buttons. Okay, so you can knot that you can choose to either weave those tails or I'm just gonna give them a trim. Okay, 
Okay, and then what you do for the next one, again, you're just wanting to make sure that it's going to go right there at the buttonhole spot. And you'll just continue this sewing on all four buttons up the side. Okay, so this is what the buttons look like completed and buttoned up. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and tap the bell to stay updated on all my new videos and tutorials. Thanks so much, guys. Have an awesome day.